uh, honored and, and grateful to be here back at IIA after uh, some years. My first visit, I think, in 2003. And I was able to visit Hanley in 2004, uh, thanks to the IIA uh, arrangements. Uh, before I, I start my talk, uh, <clears throat> but to let you know, uh, perhaps after the talk, <clears throat> we have some information about our, our ILOA observatory and our missions. Uh, a, a card to show you uh, our vision and a galaxy map that is our main uh, document at our galaxy forum. I, I, I left uh, extra copies in my hotel, but if, those, if some of you are interested in the galaxy map, I think I have 10 more uh, at the hotel. And if you could let uh, Margarita know, Dr. Sapanova here, uh, she will see that you get uh, some of the extra copies. So again, um, thank you very much for this opportunity and your interest. And I'd like to begin the talk. That's one image of our of our ILO one observatory on the moon, taking first flight of the Milky Way galaxy. First time ever imaging the Milky Way from the moon, which is a big story behind that. Why is that important? What is the significance? Sending the information back to Earth. Uh, ILOA has its, its main purpose, that of many observatories uh, in general, to expand human understanding of the cosmos, but here through observation from the moon with aloha, the spirit of, of peace and, and understanding that aloha in Hawaii uh, signifies and it's widely used. And it's very important that we're in Hawaii, which most of you know is home to the largest collection of large telescopes in one area in the world. We know that Chile has now more telescopes, but they're not all within half hour walking distance like the observatories on Mauna Kea. Uh, ILOA was formed as an organization, although the idea uh, had existed before 2007 when the nonprofit was formed in Hawaii at a founders meeting. Uh, and some of the significant characteristics of ILOA is that it's multifunctional. We intend not just to observe, but to communicate and participate in the following development and human settlement of the moon, which is becoming a reality slowly after 50 years uh, for, for <clears throat> USA, where I come from, it'll be 50 years this December since the landing was last attempted and achieved on the moon, Apollo 17, 50 years. And, and it's unlikely that there will be any landing from USA before December 14th of this year. And it will be 50 years since the last uh, American spacecraft touched the moon. Uh, I mentioned that our, our first flight, after some discussion among scientists in Hawaii, the decision to uh, choose the center of the Milky Way as first flight, which many other observatories on Earth have done, but never on the moon. And thereby uh, to open up this new frontier for astronomy, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and we'll tell, talk more about our ILOX experimental mission, which is very close to the launching to the moon. In fact, it was supposed to launch six, six months ago. Uh, the instruments have been built, ready for integration onto the spacecraft called Nova C in Houston and to be launched by SpaceX. Uh, at this point, the, uh, the, the timeline for our ILOX, I'll talk more in details, is, 
is uh, December. I'm not sure about that. Uh, ILOA has a very distinguished board of 27 directors uh, internationally, uh, currently three astronauts. Um, nobody from India since we, we lost uh, Professor U. R. Rao, who was one of the founders of the founding director of ILOA. Uh, Professor Rao was very supportive of uh, ILOA and on his own time and energy, he traveled all the way from Bangalore in Delaro to, to Hawaii uh, to help with our vision and uh, commitment to, to the moon. Uh, the five moon missions, we just started with one, the desire like, like uh, Dr. Safanova and some here to put an observatory on the moon. Our first, we called it ILO-1. Uh, we have, well, we just started, to, we originally just called it International Lunar Observatory. And it became ILO-1 as precursors were necessary to, to reach the ILO-1 development. The, the date up there uh, is, is more than optimistic. There's still a chance because we all know it's only three days travel to the moon once you're on your way. Uh, the trick, of course, is getting on your way. But we have an active uh, new proposal for ILO-1 to launch uh, optimistically and maybe realistically in two and a half years by the last part of 2024 and hopefully no later than 2025 before, before NASA and international partners land the first woman and uh, the next people on the south pole of the moon. NASA is talking about May of 2025, but I think it's more realistic that uh, 2026 will be the time that humans and the first woman returns to the moon uh, at the South Pole. The South Pole has been the consensus choice destination for uh, the first people on the moon for about 20 years throughout the, uh, the global scientific community. Almost all of the space agencies uh, and scientists agree that South Pole of the moon is the first place that humans may establish themselves. Uh, we, we learned from the examples of, of, of NASA and China uh, landing on the moon that it's good to have a backup. And we constituted a ILO-2 backup uh, about two years ago. So as we begin to develop the instruments for the ILO-1, we're, we're uh, with a little time lag developing another set for ILO-2. Uh, our precursor mission, which I'll, I just talked a little bit about, uh, within the year, it was actually supposed to launch last year. Uh, and we're hopeful, of course, in, that it'll be uh, one of the first missions back to the moon. There are two uh, USA missions, two American uh, independent company missions that NASA gave uh, awards to, the other one's called Astrobotic, ours is called, called um, <clears throat> Intuitive Machines is the company building a Nova C lander, it's called. So we have a precursor mission, uh, instruments are, are built, the contracts in place, the spacecraft in Houston has had uh, fuel tank propeller problems and that is the main cause of the delay. Uh, we hope that they, those are solved uh, in the, by December. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Before the precursor, it turned out there was another precursor opportunity. Uh, the first, the first lander back to the moon after after the. Uh, after Soviet Russia in 1976 with Luna 24, the first landing back was achieved with the Chang'e 3 uh, China lander in 2013. We had an agreement with uh, the NAOC, the National Astronomical Observatory of China, to reciprocate in uh, using each other's instruments for, for uh, astronomical observations from the moon. 
Chunga 3 was successful with a, a 15 centimeter uh, lunar ultraviolet telescope. And I'll talk a little bit about the success that that had uh, in images. Uh, finally, our, our fifth mission, or the other mission, is the ultimate one that got many of my colleagues in this business uh, 50 years ago when humans did uh, walk on the moon and enabled humanity to become, for the first time, uh, a multi-world species. Um, that, I think, was the most important accomplishment of humanity in the last 2,000 years, or maybe more. And when the first woman lands, uh, that will be the next great accomplishment because we will be on the way to becoming a multi-world civilization. I keep, I, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, interacting with SpaceX and, and uh, pointing out to, to Elon Musk that, that to become a multi-world species, you don't have to go all the way to Mars. Uh, it starts at the moon. Uh, the precursor I mentioned uh, that we worked with with uh, NAO China on on their LUT. There, there is the instrument there, parts of it. Uh, it came from an, a, an MOU agreement in Hawaii. That's our Hawaii office with the directors of the uh, China Observatory. The imaging team, Professor Jinyan Wei, there in the center, and some of his associates. And our team in Hawaii tried to figure out what uh, might be visible with the LUT, which was fixed, it wasn't movable, and at 40, 41 degrees north latitude. And the, the astronomers at the University of Hawaii figured it might be possible to catch the M101 uh, spiral galaxy. And sure enough, whoops. sure enough, uh, just before New Year, uh, late 2014, that M101 image was uh, obtained is a, a ground control uh, reference to show indeed that's M101 and constituted a great success imaging the first galaxy spiral ever from the moon. The LUT uh, functioned for five or six years. We have an ongoing uh, uh, agreement with NAOC to, to uh, contract a researcher to process the the uh, uh, nano, nano petabytes of data that the LUT has accumulated and has not been processed but that was uh, put on hold by the pandemic hopefully those that data will be uh, utilized and studied through collaboration international collaboration in the future the LUT by the way was turned off about two years ago when, when the two successive China landers, Chang'e 4 and Chang'e 5, land Chang'e 4 doing uh, astronomy from the far side, the first craft to land on the far side of the moon. Uh, neither Russia nor America landed craft on the far side of the moon. Um, Chang'e 5 conducted the first sample return uh, a couple of years ago. Our precursor uh, mission and a lot of this information is about the precursor set for launch uh, originally in July or November of last year and has slipped successively. But there's uh, there's some competition. There are other other uh, spacecraft preparing to land on the moon, so there's an urgency for uh, the Nova C, which is that is that craft there uh, built by Intuitive Machines in Houston, contracted to be launched by SpaceX. Uh, those are our two instruments. Uh, one is a narrow field, one is a wide field. Um, the specifications are, are outlined on one of these documents here if you wish more information. And uh, those also will be fixed. The, the two instruments together with their housing and, and uh, baffle 
uh, weigh a total of, of 600 grams for the two of them. Uh, that, that, that. That is the answer. Thomas is too big for this. Um, Intuitive Machines is the company that they say that built the Nova C Canadensis in Toronto, in Canada, uh, built the instruments and it's been our, our we'll build the instruments for our, our flagship ILO-1 missions. In fact, those are the uh, images of the instruments right there. The solid state uh, cameras about two to three centimeter uh, lenses. And that those are some of the uh, specs right there. Six day travel to the to the moon. We did already uh, the the astronomers working for ILOA invite invite observations from uh, some of those countries because we have not had a director on our ILOA board since since we lost Professor Rao. Uh, we have not yet uh, extended an invitation to India astronomers, but we will. And that's something to be talked about uh, with perhaps some of you here and Dr. Safanova. Okay, um, mission objectives, as I say, um, like the precursor, our first light will be at the, the Milky Way galaxy, the center of the galaxy, and uh, other astronomical uh, objects that cross the, the plane of the, the field of view of the, the lenses because they're fixed. It's a very simple mission, a low budget mission, and they're fixed on top of the lander that you just saw a moment ago. Right there, they're fixed. So uh, between the wide field and 90 degrees, uh, set 90 degrees apart is the narrow field between the two cameras. We're fairly confident of getting the uh, galaxy image, of obtaining other astronomical images from the moon, even with very low resolution. It'll be very exciting to take the first image of Jupiter or Venus or Mars uh, from the moon with, with perhaps these instruments. Uh, proof of concept, what kind of uh, astronomy is possible? What is the deterioration of the, of the instruments uh, due to the, the dust issue, micrometeorites, radiation? Um, after Milky Way galaxy imaging and, and astronomical imaging, uh, we hope to with the ILO-1, which will be steerable, to tilt the pan tilt the uh, camera down for Earth observation. And the longer we've been at this, the more valuable uh, for practical uh, human applications, Earth applications, Earth imaging from the moon, I think will be, I think it'll be just like Earth imaging from uh, geostationary orbit prove very valuable for a wide range of, of applications. Uh, imaging of the Earth, uh, whether for short-term or long-duration purposes, should be very productive and useful uh, dealing with uh, the Earth weather, uh, climate observation, uh, Earth, Earth climate, and, and solar wind space weather as well. Rotation of the Earth, one of the, the major uh, commissions of the International Astronomical Union that I'm very interested in getting precise values for rotation of the Earth from the moon will greatly enhance that, which is, of course you can understand how valuable that is for every kind of communication and, and uh, navigation function uh, on Earth, you know, just how fast the spin is. And, and finally, of course, the 
ILO-1 camera will be able to tilt from the stars down to Earth observation above the horizon, uh, all the way down to the local lunar surface for the A in site characterization for the lunar build out that occurs uh, on Malaput Mountain. At the South Pole, uh, it's almost 5,000 meters. The, it's known as the mountain on the, on the moon because there's no other that's uh, quite as prominent. And what it provides, uh, that, that image on the left, I'm sure most of you recognize from the Japan Kaguya uh, orbiter from 2007. Uh, there's the actual South Pole uh, right underneath Shackleton Crater at zero degrees south. And about 120 kilometers to the north is where our destination is, this mountain at almost 5,000 meters uh, with Earth rise in the background. <clears throat> the advantages of that location, um, ILOA has a affiliated parent company called Space Age Publishing Company, which is a commercial publishing company. And we intend to uh, to observe and communicate through the Earth 24-7 to broadcast. Uh, we have a weekly publication that hasn't missed a week since 1983, uh, with one, one week exception when an earthquake knocked down our Hawaii office. Um, but that's what we intend to broadcast uh, for professional, scientific, and commercial reasons. So line of sight to Earth 24-7 from mile per mountain, you can see the Earth uh, continuously. The high elevation uh, of the mountain enables power to be achieved, not, not continuously, so there are still lunar night challenges to technically to meet, but about 80% uh, of the time, it's still unknown exactly how much uh, power there will be, how much sunlight at that location. But that's one of the, uh, those are the two great advantages of Malaput Mountain. Uh, near uh, craters uh, harboring uh, water ice, necessary for uh, a moon base uh, around the, the giant Aitken Basin impact crater, which is a treasure trove to geologists and eventually for uh, utilization by, by mining capabilities. The southern skies uh, are asset rich in, in uh, astronomical objects. There's an advantage of uh, setting up human development at the South Pole of our nearest celestial neighbor, the moon, because we've learned to, to do science and development at the South Pole of our, own, of our own world, the seventh continent of Antarctica. And it's interesting that the eighth continent is widely referred to now, excuse me, the moon widely referred to as the eighth continent. And I think from, uh, interestingly, I think from a point of how we go about developing it, I think Antarctica provides a very uh, good uh, example, precedent for scientific peaceful uses of development for all countries and all, all peoples. And we hope to, uh, to keep that and honor the, honor the, the, the pledge that, that was written on the Apollo 11 plaque that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin put on the moon in peace for all. For all. Um, <clears throat> why uh, the image of the galaxy first from the moon and, and what is the significance? It could well be that that image, the first image when we go back to the moon in the 21st century, uh, we'll look back not only at Earth like we did in the 20th century in that first image of, of the Earth from the moon, uh, everybody knows had a profound effect on how we see uh, ourselves, how we see uh, life and Earth, the first image of Earth from the moon. When we go back in the 21st century, we'll look back not just at, at our home planet at Earth, but look out into the future at, at the galaxy. And I think there's this a, a story and an impact that that first image may have, similar to what the first image of Earth from the Moon had in the 20th century. 
Um, as as uh, Margarita mentioned, we've conducted this program, um, uh, this Galaxy Forum program. It's the main uh, education outreach mechanism of ILOA. Uh, we help we we help two uh, interesting, successful Galaxy Forums here in Bangalore with the participation of, of Dr. Shailaja here uh, in 2010 and 2011. Uh, at the Nehru Planetarium, and the second one was, was so big and included uh, Professor Rao and and former President uh, APJ Kalam, Abdul Kalam, at the Galaxy Forum. Uh, we've had over 100. Uh, we've had 105 events uh, all over, all around Hawaii, across the USA, and around the world. Like to have a galaxy forum in Antarctica, and of course, eventually on the moon, robotically at first. And as they say, uh, there's an image of the galaxy map with a treasure trove of, of astronaut astrophysical information at the back. Uh, this was printed, we printed a, a lot of them in January of 2020. And you all know what happened there. So we've got a lot left over, but uh, we'll have to revise it and come out with a 14th printing uh, for our next event because now we have a, uh, a black hole uh, image to put in the center of our galaxy. Uh, the human service mission. Um, we hope that that we, uh, ILOA and Space Age Publishing Company have been at the forefront, I think, of the uh, effort to return to the moon with humans, including uh, uh, women as well as men. And we began advocating for that, I believe, before anybody else in the USA, uh, because 2016, one of the leading uh, presidential candidates, of course, was, was female. Uh, and even though she didn't win, it still seemed like a good idea. And now, uh, and now we have this this dramatic commitment that was made by uh, then U.S. Vice President on March 26, 2019, to go back to the moon not in eight years but in four years to go to the South Pole, which we have been advocating, and with a woman. And that announcement was everything I could have wished for, and the fact that it was on my birthday made it even that more special. Um, <clears throat> We hope to have uh, some time from those early astronauts to to calibrate our robotic observatories that will precede the the, uh, the human landing. We have 15 years now, and more than 15 years of technical research to to collaborate with the first astronaut, making those calibrations and observations, and it would be a significant historic incredible transcending and transnational event. Okay, why astronomy from the moon? And uh, the, the common common uh, response is usually, well, we have great Earth obser uh, observatories and, and great space observatories, which we do, and we still will. I don't think uh, Earth observation, uh, Earth observatories are going to be obsolete, uh, nor space ones. Um, but space observatories have now been operating for almost 50 years. Um, so uh, they're not new. Observation from the moon is new, and I believe will open up a whole next frontier of astronomy, a whole frontier. Um, and some observations are feasible uh, only from the moon. Uh, one of the, the most obvious and early considerations for astronomy from the moon was the far side of the moon, which is radio quiet, not getting all of uh, uh, India TV broadcasts or I Love Lucy from the US, but using the moon as a shield uh, to, to make a, a radio free quiet environment on the far side. There are now efforts uh, and within the IAU, within the IAF, to create at the center of the far side of the moon, a radio-free zone. 
whether that succeeds or not, uh, there are a lot of questions, but that's one of the uh, immediate attractive uses of astronomy from the moon, of radio astronomy on the far side of the moon to see back to the beginning of, of, of the universe. The, the moon is a, a very stable platform, uh, enabling interferometry, various configurations of uh, interferometric instruments. Of course, uh, it's a almost uh, airless uh, environment. The exosphere is extremely thin, uh, thinner than the low Earth orbit. The atmosphere, uh, the exosphere on the moon is, is even thinner than low Earth orbit. And of course, with the human development and human settlements um, and, and outposts serv servicing the uh, lunar observatories will be much easier, uh, less expensive than space observatories. As, as you know, one of the difficulties with the Webb telescope, which costs, I believe, 10, 10 billion US, is that as of now, it can't be serviced. Um, and lunar observatories will be able to be serviced. There's a, uh, a rendering, a very simple diagram from uh, the book uh, called The Moon by, by uh, my associate Dave, Dave Schrunk um, and his, his team 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, showing that uh, virtually the whole universe will be open to continuous high resolution from most any place on the moon uh, with a wide variety of instruments and, and objects to observe. Again, anything astronomers can do, any place can be done from the moon. Telescopes and observatories uh, near side. Going back to the uh, Soviet Russia uh, lunar cod in 70, Apollo 16. Uh, and I'll have more to say about uh, John Young, astronaut John Young, uh, making the first uh, human astronomical observation from the moon in 72. The China MUT uh, seven or eight years ago that I mentioned. And our mission, um, ILOX, within the year, uh, should have been last year. We're hoping for December. There's another astronomical mission called uh, ROLFUS that belongs to the University of Colorado and Jack Burns. That is flying on the same uh, the same uh, spacecraft, Nova C, with us, and we've had uh, extensive communications with with Rolsis. They have as their ultimate destination a radio telescope on the far side. This mission is going to the near side of the moon, so they'll validate some uh, radio tele uh, analysis of, of the electron uh, density at low levels above the lunar surface on, on the, the first mission, which is, as I say, going to the near side, about 24 degrees north latitude. Uh, on the far side, uh, the, the China, China 4 uh, telescope in collaboration with the Netherlands, that's NCLE, From, from uh, Radboud University that's operational now. The far side experiments, missions of Jack Burns, I just mentioned University of Colorado later in the decade. And the idea, there was a, a classic study, a definitive study on, called the International Lunar Farside Observatory and Science, State, Science Station done by the, uh, at the University National Space University in 1993 that projected far side observatories. South Pole, well, we'll see um, this summer um, with all the challenges. It's not certain that Luna 25 will go, will launch in, in August, but as far as the latest news goes, there's, there's still the attempt. And there's a classic example of perseverance because Luna 24 
was in 1976. So 46 years between Luna 24 and Luna 25. Uh, and India's uh, Chandrayaan 3, we're not sure, and perhaps perhaps uh, ISRO isn't exactly sure when Chandrayaan 3 will go also. Uh, there are some indications from, from the new chairman that it may may go uh, slip till next year. But it could, could go uh, later this year. I might have more information on that after my meeting with, with the ISRO chairman tomorrow. And by the way, uh, we still have that perhaps unreasonably optimistic date of NET 2023, we'll say 2024, and that'd be, that'd be a great achievement. We have time in our, our uh, timeline for a 2025 landing as well, getting there before the first, the next uh, humans return to the moon at the South Pole. North Pole, there was one uh, experiment that, that uh, been, uh, canceled, but again, once people go, uh, humans start going back to the moon, South Pole, North Pole, near side, far side, 50 million people in the 24th century, I don't know. Um, and the types of observation, uh, again, any astronomical observation, not just from any site or with any instrument, but uh, given the, the totality of the, the whole world, the whole sphere of the moon, uh, near side, uh, UV, of course, uh, far side radio and infrared with the, the cold traps of necessary for infrared observation. Uh, from the pole, uh, VLF, long duration observation with the slow, slow rotation of the pole. And most of the locations on, on the moon uh, would allow for uh, optical gamma ray X-ray and interferometry. Uh, again, we hope that that uh, once the technology is achieved for VLBI for Earth Moon VLBI, uh, enormous advances in, in resolution will be possible, um, and hopefully uh, lunar observatories will be part of a. A, a next generation event horizon telescope association. That that should, that really summarizes uh, our ILOA five moon missions at this point and astronomy from the moon. And if uh, we have a little bit more time and patience here, I'll just scan what uh, very more generally what many of you know. Um, those are some of the images that from our galaxy forum. Uh, program. Uh, a lot of our work has been done in Southeast Asia, many of the Southeast Asian countries in recent years, and our first post-pandemic uh, Galaxy Forum will be in Singapore in two months, Galaxy Forum Southeast Asia, uh, following the last in-person uh, Galaxy Forum we had at the at the Astro Park in, in Chiang Mai, Thailand, uh, hosted by, uh, in person by uh, Maha Chakri Sirenthorn, uh, Princess of Thailand. And that's the venue right there in Singapore. We'll be at the Art Science Museum uh, down at the uh, Marina Bay, Bay uh, Sands. Nice venue. Some of the uh, Images in the center slide there are, are of Southeast Asia. That's the, the uh, National Telescope of, of Thailand. There's the Astro Park that we, we were at in 2020. That's uh, Malaysia's, Malaysia's Solar Observatory. Um, John Young. The only only human to travel around the moon and work on the moon. Uh, he, he set up the and conducted the first astronomy for the moon. So John Young uh, is really the, the father of astronomy from the moon, of lunar astronomy, and was an emeritus, emeritus and founding director of ILOA. Um, and was awarded by our, our ILOA company with the a plaque for 
astronaut of the century, last century, which the case could be made indeed that he was the most accomplished astronaut of the 20th century. Seven, seven space missions, um, including one from the moon. And uh, that's a, a snapshot of, of USA past and hopefully USA present uh, and future with with the Artemis turned to the moon. Uh, China and the moon, we've talked about quite a lot already. Uh, China 5 is still, parts of it is still operated and returned 1,731 uh, grams of the moon for study and analysis uh, throughout the world. But I think uh, China has three more missions, China six, seven, and eight planned before the human mission, which realistically may be uh, in the 20, 28 to 30 time frame. It's possible if, if their rocket development, launcher development uh, proceeds successfully that they have the capacity to, to place uh, humans on the moon as, as soon as uh, mid-decade, but I think 28 to 30 is more uh, realistic time frame. Uh, India astronomy from the moon, I've, I've had the, the, the real honor and, and great opportunity to meet ISRO chairman, the last seven ISRO chairman, and tomorrow uh, meeting uh, Dr. Somanov to talk about our uh, collaboration on our ILO-1 flagship mission. When I met uh, uh, Kiran Kumar a few years ago, uh, we mentioned our, our lunar astronomy project and he was quite, quite supportive. Chandrayaan-2, Chandrayaan-3, we talked about uh, hopefully this year, and uh, I think that last that, that statement on the bottom right that the collaboration that's been underway for a couple of years with Japan between India and Japan for a, for a, a lunar polar exploration mission. I don't think it'll be called Chandrayaan Four. Uh, I don't know what it will be called. Uh, OPEX, I think, is the acronym now. Uh, lunar Polar Explorer, Explorer. Uh, Chandrayaan 4 and Chandrayaan 5 still to be decided. Japan uh, has yet to land on the moon, uh, maybe next year, early next year, with their smart lunar and uh, projections for. Uh, Celine to human lander by uh, by the end of the decade. Japan and I think 18 other countries now are partners in the NASA Artemis uh, Accords. They're called Artemis Accords. A private venture in in um, an independent venture like ILOA in Japan uh, may may be the first. It may make it first. Ice Ice Space Tokyo possibly late this year with a little rover. Malaysia gets uh, had the distinction of sending the only astronaut in the 21st century in Southeast Asia to the moon. Uh, also a member of our board of directors, uh, astronaut Sheikh Muzaffar Shakur, and, and hopefully he'll be at, at the Singapore uh, event as well. Uh, giving a, an opening welcome. He's, he's attended several of our galaxy forums and hosted one in Kuala uh, Lumpur. Singapore, uh, not not very uh, not very rich in astronomical and astronautical resources, but uh, very advantage for being a center of communications, uh, commerce, 
transportation and culture, perhaps a, an appropriate uh, venue for a Southeast Asia Space Agency or other Southeast Asia Central Science publications. And we work in in uh, in, South, in in Singapore with an organization called the uh, Singapore Space and Technology Limited, where I just came from yesterday. We put on the Global Space and Technology Convention. Indonesia, which is also aspiring for astronomical observatories on the moon, uh, potential launch site from uh, Indonesia, given the fact that it spans one eighth of the Earth's equator. And also a, an active uh, participant in ILOA and will be represented at the uh, Galaxy Forum in Singapore in uh, late July. Thailand, we talked about there, there's the Astro Park. Really amazing, unique facility in the world. It's an astronomy village. I mean, what, what more could we ask for? Uh, it has, I think, 20 hectares of area, 11 facilities, got observatories, uh, planetarium, administration building, auditorium, uh, machine shop, mirror coding lab, 11 facilities at the Astro Park. And it also uh, hosts Thailand as the, the uh, premier observatory at this point in all of Southeast Asia that sits right in the top of Thailand, the tallest mountain, the uh, uh, National Research Telescope. And uh, other countries, uh, South Korea will be sending its first orbiter to, to the moon, uh, perhaps in the summer, that's the last we heard in, in August. Uh, Russia, we talked about the Luna 25. And ESA, uh, we'll see. The last ESA director came up with the idea of a moon village, which is a really Um, and uh, we've had a lot of studies for moon landing, but we'll see where this is. Uh, I think it's extraterrestrial. I don't think it's extraterrestrial, but it has got some funny. Ravi Shankar, can you please mute yourself? Um, and, and uh, Canada also incre uh, increasingly interested in, in, in the moon. That's, that's where we should be. And that's, that's my summary and that's my, my update and be happy to answer any questions. Uh, conclude with the greeting, um, the equivalent to Namaste, uh, Aloha from Hawaii. You have an open invitation to to come and visit, uh, if you can make it there, be happy to uh, show you around to the, I like to think of it as the top of the world, of uh, the top of Mauna Kea. That's my favorite place on our planet, where I've been 441 times, plus or minus one. Um, and let us know, but be happy to, uh, Margarita, I don't know how you want to proceed, if you want to have a question and answer or, I do have these materials up here. Question. Uh, what is the significance of sending your specific to the South Pole? I understand the story, uh, astronomical observation, but you mentioned that human specifically would go to the South Pole. What is the significance of that? Well, um, <clears throat> Water for starters, um, and you can heat it too and boil it. Um, <laughs> water, the, the, the confirmation of uh, uh, 
hydrogen isotopes and, and molecules uh, embedded in the in the lunar regolith. So water is the is the driver, right? Uh, follow the water has been the NASA NASA saying for some years. So water is is the first uh, attraction, and then the other assets that I mentioned, the high peaks, um, the the uh, which which provide uh, sunlight and Earth observation twenty four seven. The that Aiken Basin is unique, twenty five hundred kilometers in diameter, which again would be a treasure trove for geologists and eventually for uh, mining uh, operations that have to be sure universally agreed. The South Pole analog between uh, the seventh continent of Antarctica and skies for southern skies for observation. But the the cold traps, the, the ice water that is trapped at the uh, dark uh, the dark bottom of craters where the sun never reaches. So that's 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 what drives NASA's uh, planning for missions too. That's why NASA has not yet chosen to go to Malapert Mountain, nor has the China Space Agency chosen that. So we're, I mean, I'm here to um, hopefully interest uh, interest India to make that first um, uh, iconic landing at the mountain on the moon. Uh, we have pro active proposals just within weeks to Blue Origin, uh, to Intuitive Machines, Moon Village Association, and next month uh, we're planning to propose a Isla One South Pole mission to SpaceX too. Uh, but I think it would be really wonderful to, to, for expression of interest and, and start towards commitment uh, from ISRO. Chandrayaan 4 or Chandrayaan 5 with ILO 1 as a partner uh, and a modest investor to begin with, and hopefully uh, able to take other instruments, perhaps from India, of course, if, 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 uh, if it's uh, a Chandrayaan vehicle, it obviously be in uh, India, uh, ILO instruments. You're welcome to approach him yeah, actually ask for it so that students can actually ask questions directly. Well, that, that, Let us think. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. Yeah. There is something about the funding, uh, how who funds ILOA and Well, ILOA has some. some Minimal private funds, private funds, not enough to pay for the Polish paper, the Polish. But, but enough to, uh, we, we paid already for the instruments, the small instruments, and we have enough to contribute and other interested parties. Uh, and so there's, there's some funding and some fundraising capabilities. Uh, so. Uh, there is some funding available, but not enough for the whole mission. And as far as as far as uh, uh, fundraising uh, matters, I did I did ask Dr. Safanova, and I believe one or one or two of you here, if anybody knows about uh, NFTs, uh, please let me know because we're looking at uh, NFTs, making NFTs from the images that we capture from the moon. And I'd be happy to follow up with some specifics to, to you, Director, uh, regarding the support for the mission. Okay, well, I want to thank, thank you all for coming. I, I guess uh, it worked out pretty well. We were a little afraid that there was a confusing time, um, but here you all are. Uh, materials, there's some sheets here if you want more information. Uh, the, the mission, the vision card, um, and if, if any of you care for a galaxy map so you can find your way around, uh, let Margarita know and we can deliver some to you uh, uh, soon. So okay. thanks again for your attention. Thank you. Okay, let's thank you. Yes, can you go to the map? Okay, you can have the direct